Hey guys, what's up? It's Kurt Hughes here with Ignite Baseball and Softball. I have Maya Brady on the right and Samantha Shaw on the left, um, both of which is both of which are forces in softball. Um, Shaw now at the professional level and Brady um, at the college level. And for the last two years, she's been pretty dominant. So I want to look at a couple things that are similar about their swings and a couple things that. Um, that I think that Maya Brady could probably work on. Um, I'll, be, I'll just be clear. Uh, Shao has one of my favorite swings ever, baseball, softball, anybody. Her swing is really, really elite. And I just want to kind of point out a couple things that she does really, really well. And obviously there's some things that Brady does as well that are really, really elite. Um, but I think there's a couple things that I think that Brady could improve upon um, and we'll just kind of like go through that real quick. So I had a bunch of videos load up, loaded up here of Maya Brady. Um, but this first one that I have is probably the best angle um, to be able to evaluate anything. It's not a perfect apples to apples angle just because for whatever reason, there isn't as many side view videos in college softball um, as maybe there should be. Um, but um, that, that question or that problem is for another day. So we'll just kind of break this down. Um, she hits this ball way, way over the fence on the pull side. Um, you see she just demolishes this ball. Um, she does a great job of hitting pitches that are up in the zone, which obviously is really important in softball because girls are throwing a lot of rise balls and trying to dominate the top of the zone. That's how they get a lot of strikeouts. So we'll take a look at this view right here and compare this to what Xiao is doing on the left. So you're going to see that they both have really, really simple but effective strides. So one of the things that we talk about with all our hitters is that during the stride phase, we need to lift the pelvis up. So you can see that they both have really simple strides. And one of the things that we talk about with all of our hitters is that during the stride phase, we need to slant the pelvis up a little bit and we need to slide that front hip forward. And that's something that Xiao does really, really well. And you'll see that, that you can kind of see how the front side of her hip moves like beyond where I drew that line just barely. And that's what I mean by sliding the hip forward. Sometimes like the move is much bigger, like someone like a, like a Bo Bichette or like a Ryan Zimmerman. Um, but sometimes the move is much more subtle. And in both of these athletes, the movement is a little bit more subtle. So we'll look at Brady here doing something really similar. Okay, so that front hip, sorry, I gotta go back a little bit. So that front hip goes up, you can see right there, and it slides a little bit forward. You can see it go just barely beyond that line that I drew. Okay, what that does is allows her to transition her weight slightly to her front foot. So that way she's able to rotate her pelvis using the muscles in her core, which she can use her front leg to brace. And that's something that they both do really, really well. So I'm just going to clear that and kind of demonstrate that really quick. So when I say that front leg braces, what I mean is that they hit behind their front leg. So when I draw a line up from this front foot, you can see how far the head is behind that front leg. And that's what I mean. They don't slide their head forward as they rotate. They keep that head back behind that front leg, which allows them to see the pitch really well and come up behind it really nicely. Um, and that's something that they both do really well. You'll also notice a couple position matches here. So right at contact or when they're halfway through their swing, it's a straight line from their front foot to their head and a straight line from their back knee to their head. I'll just kind of adjust that on Xiao over here, assuming I can get that to grab. There we go. Cool. And then same story right there. Okay, cool. We can see how those line up pretty cleanly. Okay. Once again, head back, just like we were talking about. Okay. Um, really, really good separation here. When we talk about separation, usually what we're talking about, now there's a bunch of different ways we can separate, but one of the ways that we talk about most is separating what the pelvis is doing from what the rib, rib cage is doing. So you can see Brady does a really nice job of getting her hips up, open up the third baseline. So her belly button's pointing kind of maybe there and her chest is closed. And you can see if I run Shao's back a little bit, you're going to see the same thing. So her belly button gets up the first baseline where her chest stays back. This creates a gradient of potential energy that she can use to sling that bat through the zone. It's really, really important. It's probably one of the things that we see most in hitters that they struggle with is they're not really good at getting that lower body to rip the upper body through. 
Um, and that's something that both Brady and Shao do really, really well. So as we kind of get into it here, the thing that I think Brady could improve upon really is her direction. So when I say her direction, what I mean is like how long is her barrel going in the field of play? So like I don't necessarily need it to go straight towards the center fielder, but I would like it to stay in fair territory for a little bit longer. So Brady, as she gets into her swing, she turns it really, really deep and gets a ton of barrel acceleration back behind her, which is why she does so well on pitches that are away. A lot of this pitch, she is more like um, more like middle in and up, and she hits this to the pull side really, really well. But I want you guys to just observe what's going on with her barrel. So right here is where she can probably start hitting a fair ball, somewhere in between these two frames. And then you'll see right after this, you can see like if she makes contact right here, that ball is going to go foul. Maybe really far foul, but foul. What I'd like to see is her to hold that barrel in fair territory for just like one or two more frames. And when we think about like whether the barrel is going to go fair or whether the barrel is going to go foul, I like to think of it kind of like the, the, the side of like a pool table. So if here's like where the ball is going to run into and the ball is coming in at this angle, that ball is going to kind of bounce out here, right? So like if she's able to hold her barrel kind of in this direction, like a little bit longer, so kind of here, then when her barrel, when the ball runs into it like this, boom, it's going to bounce off like this and that's going to go in the field of play. And what you'll see is that her barrel just leaves that a little bit quicker than we want and just has a little bit of an early, earlier rollover than we necessarily would like. And we'll look at Xiao over here. Okay, and that she does a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So her barrel gets into the field of play probably like right here. And it's going to look like she's in there for a lot more frames because the video quality on Xiao's video is a lot higher, um, meaning more frames per second. So it's going to look like she's in the zone for like a ridiculous amount of frames. Um, I, you know, Xiao definitely is in the zone for more frames than Brady, but not like drastically more. So she's in the, in the zone here, right here. And she could probably hit a fair ball to the opposite field right here or close to it. Definitely could hit a fair ball here. 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 And then here is where we start like coming out of the zone. So she's just in the zone and able to hit fair balls quite a bit longer than Brady. And a lot of that starts with not necessarily what her arms are doing. Now, there are some things that we can talk about, right? So like, and I'll talk about those real quick. Xiao keeps her front elbow high for a little bit longer. So there's always like this inverse relationship between where the front elbow is and where the bat is. Okay, so when that front elbow is high, that allows us to keep the bat low and in the zone for a little bit longer. And you'll see that she does a really, really nice job of doing that. That front elbow stays up and that allows the barrel to stay in the zone really, really long. So you'll see Brady do that elbow will drop it's here. It's still pretty high. And then this next frame, you'll see it drop a little bit. And then that rollover kind of occurs. But I think most of Brady's directionality stuff really has to do with her rotation and her feet. Okay. So like imagine that Brady has, and really both athletes do not just, just Maya. Um, they have like, connected tissue that runs all the way from their foot all the way up into their upper body, right? So imagine that like, and that's called the spiral line. So like, I'll just kind of draw it sloppily because I'm usually pretty bad at drawing this, but like all the way down her leg like this, she has connective tissue and that runs all the way up across her body onto her opposite side. And eventually, once that line gets really, really stretched out, rotation has to stop. It cannot continue. So imagine that line getting really, really stretched out. And if she leaves that foot back behind her, her rotation is going to stop. When I say her foot way behind her, can you kind of see how I'm going to clear it? Can you see how her toe is kind of like behind her heel? And when you look at Xiao, her heel is behind her toe. Now, when that toe stays behind the heel like that, what ends up happening is that that foot stays really, really far behind and she gets really, really stretched out in that line that I just drew. And what ends up happening 
is the turn stops and wherever the turn stops, the barrel is immediately going to shoot out really, really quickly. And when her turn starts to stop or really slows down aggressively, her chest is like here, like very, very, like I would say probably like at the shortstop. And when Xiao's chest starts to slow down aggressively, her chest is like at like the pitcher. So when her chest is starts to slow down or decelerate, when it's at the pitcher, the direction the bat is going to go is going to go in this direction. But if your chest starts to slow down really aggressively or decelerate aggressively and your chest is still kind of like at the shortstop and you're a lefty, what's going to happen is your barrel is going to accelerate really quick, but it's going to accelerate really quick kind of like this direction, kind of like towards the opposite field. And what's going to end up happening is it's then going to snap over in this direction too quick and leave the zone. And that's what we kind of see with Brady is because she doesn't slow down or she doesn't turn her chest quite far enough because of what her foot is doing. That's what leads to that snap over in the pull side direction towards the dugout. And that's why her bats leave in the zone a little bit quicker than we necessarily want. If we were to pull that foot up under us a little bit better, like we see Xiao doing, and get that heel to get behind the toe versus the toe being behind the heel, I think what we'd see is better direction. And really the reason this happens to go kind of science nerd on you for a second, like wherever the deceleration occurs, that's always going to result in the direction of the acceleration. So like imagine like you had a car, right? So let's say a car was like, or a bike, let's just so it's a little bit less graphic. Let's say a bike was like traveling this way. And then all of a sudden, I'll just change colors for this. All of a sudden, that, bat, that bike slammed on the brakes really hard or like you hit a curb with your front tire. That person that's on the bike, and I'll change the colors here, that person that's on the bike would then go over the handlebars and they'd go in the direction of the deceleration. Now, if they hit the curb going more on an angle, or they came in at a different angle to hit the curb like that, the direction that they'd go over the handlebars would change, right? So really like the bat and the athlete kind of have the same relationship with the person on the bike and the bike. So imagine that the body of the athlete is the bike and the bat is the person on the bike. So when the body stops really, really quick, that barrel is going to shoot out really, really quick. And because Maya stops a little bit quick, that's what allows or forces that bat to kind of flip over and go like into foul territory quicker than we necessarily would want. So if I were working with Maya Brady, I would just say, okay, like let's get our foot up under us a little bit better and let's be a little bit more consistent about how far we turn. I'd like to see that chest get to 90 degrees every time. So when I say 90 degrees, I mean like if the other batter's box were zero degrees right here, right there, I want to see that chest get to 90 consistently. And I don't want the slowdown to happen much before 90. If the slowdown of that chest happens at like say 70 degrees, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see fast bat in this direction and then I'll change colors for this. And then you're going to see snap over to foul territory in this direction. And we generally don't want to see that. We want to see as much fast bat in the direction of fair territory as possible as we see Xiao doing here on the left. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, take a look at our website, ignitebaseball.org, if you're interested in more stuff like this. Have a great rest of your day.